Hey there, long time lurker, first time poster. Allow me to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Vinny, and I'm a monster. What? Why the surprise? You think we don't look at places like this? Everyone likes to check out places on the internet where they might turn up, and I bet there isn't a single one of you that hasn't googled yourself. Same goes for us. We like to keep tabs on what the rumors are, to see if anyone has been telling tales and revealing too many of our secrets. Most of it is garbage, of course. Stuff about people hurting other people. Spooky graveyards and spouses not acting right. But once in a while, there's a story that's just too real. A story that's got to be from a personal experience with someone like myself. Of course, nobody is going to believe it, and that's precisely why we're still around. If any credence was given to this stuff, me and my kind would get wiped out in a heartbeat. That's not why I'm here though. See, what you kids don't realize is that us monsters have got stories to tell as well. Sometimes, even we come across things that make our skin crawl. Things that make our spines, tails, scales, and fur stand on end. So tonight, I'm going to tell you about one of those things. Because I think you ought to know that there are things out there that even monsters fear. <sighs> Technically, I don't need to eat human flesh. It's just easier that way. Others of my kind live out in the wilderness, preying on wild deer, rabbits, and the odd wolf or bear. That's a pretty hard life though, even if it's how we were supposed to live way back when. But with this advent of cities came an abundance of food, and a bunch of us decided that the urban life was for us. During the day, we blend with you folk, walking amongst you, hanging out on the fringes of civilized society. We're not exactly experts at it, but we're good enough to pass as human during the day. But at night, at night, we get hungry. Cats and dogs are pretty easy meat. Pigeons even more so, but not particularly satisfying. You can live on those winged rats for a few weeks, definitely. But after a while, you need something more substantial to fill the void like a good-sized Rottweiler, or a ten-year-old kid. A grown man will keep me going for a few days. I usually hang him up in the elevator well of some abandoned office block, taking a limb off every night. Nobody checks on those secluded concrete shafts. They're on my own personal larder. The perfect cool store for the privacy-inclined predator. Certainly, I could raid abattoirs and supermarkets for fresh meat, but there's two problems with that. The first is that you humans have fucking cameras everywhere, and I hate cameras. The second is that there's no hunt. I am, after all, a monster. Without the thrill of fear fermenting in their veins, people just don't taste quite right. So, anyway, back to the subject of my fear. There's something unnaturally creepy about little girls, especially ones who wander about on their own. Dead-eyed and dispassionate, confident and deliberate. This one was definitely one of my own kind, or at least a very close cousin. I noticed her scent when she encroached on my turf. We're territorial beasts, and the amount of people we need to kill to survive makes those territories quite large. And usually, in the kinds of places where people aren't cared for particularly well by society, I let her off the hook for the first couple of kills. Human children of her own age whom she lured out of a bedroom with her bruised eyes and crocodile tears. But when she continued to hunt well beyond her appetite, I decided to pay her more attention. I admired her strategy. I cut my teeth on pedophiles and hobos, rather than using an endearing vulnerability to lure children and adults out of their homes. The concerned human would ask her what was wrong. She'd sob and sniffle until they drew closer, and then it would happen. A flash of talons, bristling black fur and gaping jaws. The hapless mortal would lie dead on the asphalt for a moment. Then, she would snatch them up with unnatural strength and vanish over the rooftops. What was truly curious, though, was that every night she would clearly still be hungry, starving. In fact, judging by how she shivered in her human flesh and how her belly growled loud enough to be heard from 30 feet away, 
I just had to know what was going on, and so I made the terrible mistake of following her. The size of her territory was horrifyingly large. She hunted all night, from the first dusting of twilight right up until the brink of dawn, killing up to four or five times. She was careful, too, mixing ordinary victims with the homeless, careless prostitutes and large dogs so as to blur her trail of death. All of them she took back to a central location a storm water tunnel that led deep under the city. Of course, I followed her. I am a pathological killer who literally drinks the blood of innocence. What could possibly terrify me? I caught her on the hop, heading back to her lair. She sensed me coming, but I was too big and too fast. We tussled briefly in our true forms. Then, as I held her pinned to the tarmac, she began to cry and plead. Don't eat me. She begged. I need to feed Mama so she gets better. And with that phrase, everything was explained. Somewhere deep in that tunnel was the mother of this beastling, a matriarch who was sending her daughter out to bring an endless array of food for an enormous appetite. I'd heard of this before, and it was frowned upon in what passed for our society. Children shouldn't be exploited this way. They should be turned loose to find their own niche not enslaved by their parents. I need to have a word to your mama. I growled at her. Please, she whispered. Please don't. I didn't brook any discussion and hauled the child to the tunnel, marching her ahead of me into the gloom, where somewhere her monstrously fat mother wallowed obscenely. The stench was so bad that I, a sometimes eater of finely aged carrion, gagged. What the hell is that? I managed through gritted canines. Mama, said the dead-eyed girl, and then I saw her. I projectile vomited, the semi-digested nuggets of my last meal spattering the stained concrete. The mother was enormous, far larger than anything my imagination had been capable of conjuring up. Her vast white body hulked in the darkness above, like some massive, bloated slug. The worst was her head. Her jaws had been forced past the point of breaking, and were held open with pieces of pipe, rebar, and plastic to form a three-foot-wide chasm into her innards. As I retched weakly from the smell and sight of her, the little one picked up the corpse of one of that night's kills and deftly climbed up the maggot pale mound of her distended mother's flesh, where she forced the body down that wrecked throat. It appeared that Mama was quite dead and had been for a very long time. She just needs to eat, the beastling said. Matter of factly, Mama is always hungry. With watering eyes, I regard that titanic corpse in front of me, stuffed to overflowing with more corpses in varying states of decay. I knew that I was witnessing something truly obscene, and truly unnatural. So, that's my tale for tonight. What became of the little girl, I don't know. I abandoned that territory for fear of being caught up in her eventual discovery, but sometimes when I'm handing up my dinner to dry in some abandoned elevator shaft, I remember the sight and smell of mama, then feel suddenly nauseous and skip the fresh meat, instead opting for a greasy burger from some fast food joint downtown. I guess human food ain't all that bad. Ugh. Hey guys, Ghost here. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. I honestly appreciate and thank all of you for watching. Like seriously, it's freaking awesome. I also have a Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram, so if you'd like, feel free to add me. So that's pretty much all that I have for this video, guys. Again, thank you all for watching, and as always, have a safe night.